Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up this California Air Tools 10 gallon pressure pot for resin casting. Here we go. Several months ago I did a video on this Harbor Freight paint pot and I converted it into a pressure pot for resin casting. I'll put a link to the video up here. There's nothing wrong with this. This is a real cheap solution on having a pressure pot for resin casting. I just wanted a bigger one. So this is the one I got is the California Air Tools. Uh, 10 gallon one, this is two and a half gallon. Now this one works, but this one has some options on it that are better for resin casting, makes it last longer or more convenient or whatever. One of those is how this lid tightens down. It has a bolt with a wing nut on it and it comes and there's a big washer under here and it is going to apply even pressure to this lid and there's more anchor points so it's going to hold it down better and last longer. This one here has this little uh, C bracket here with a bolt through it and this bolt just stabs into the lid and it marks up the lid and it's probably going to distort it over time or whatever. Um, this also has places for you could put casters on this or you can just bolt it to a table so it doesn't move around when you're trying to tighten it like this. And then, so you got your wing nuts, you got your feet, and then at the bottom you can see that this isn't a flat surface. This is, uh, this curves down. So when you put things in there, it's uh, either you want to put something flat in this or you want to position it to where it's level. This one here has a flat bottom in it. So you're not going to have to worry about placing it in, in a certain way or putting something in the bottom for it to, to be flat. So now I've just discussed the differences. The obvious one is going to be the size and then there's the little options. This is a good pressure pot. It's cheap and it'll get you into it uh, for, for less money. But it, you get something bigger or a little more higher quality. We're going to talk about this and we're going to get this ready for, uh, pressure, for to be a pressure pot. These are all the things we're going to need to convert this thing. First thing is a 3 inch long 5 8 inch bolt and a 5 8 inch nut, two metal 5 8 washers, two rubber washers. You can use rubber or the plastic ones. I found the rubber ones. This is a quarter inch a quick neck fitting for your air. That's how we're going to get air in there. There's a quarter inch thread. It's pretty common. This is pipe thread sealant. You can use this or Teflon tape. I'm using this. These wrenches here, they're adjustable. Most people are going to have this. It's always better to use a wrench that fits the nut or bolt, but everybody should have those. And then we have a pipe wrench and a number three Allen key. And I'll show you what that's for in a minute. I'll have links below to everything we use in this video. Um, go check it out and let's start building this thing. Obviously, I've already taken this out of the box but I haven't done anything to it. So we're going to open this up and I'm going to show you how it's supposed to work originally. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do to change it into what we want. So here we go. First, we'll take the lid off. The first thing you're going to notice is we have a pipe here and then a rod here with a little fan thingy on it. This is a paint agitator and there's a handle that comes all the way. It goes all the way through here and spins like that. And that's supposed to mix your paint. And this right here is a siphon tube for your paint to go out of this valve right here. And that goes to a spray gun. And that's about it. Here's your regulator and air goes in here and you regulate the air pressure. Here's your pressure gauge and that regulates the pressure in the tank. So what we're going to do, all we want to do is anywhere there's a place that air can get out, we want to plug it. We want to make sure that air can't get out but it can get in. We want to be able to regulate it and we want to be able to, we still want our pressure gauge. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this pipe and this rod. So that's where the, the pipe wrench is going to come in handy for this. One down. Well, this thing here, there's a collar right there. and a collar right here and they have that small allen wrench that i mentioned earlier that's going to go in there and we're going to take it off so now we made a huge hole right here by taking that rod out both sides 
This is big hole. So our 5 8 inch bolts that we talked about a minute ago, that's what we're going to do. We have our bolt and you got a metal washer and then we're going to put a rubber washer on it in that order like that. We're going to put it right through the top of this where we made that hole. We're going to do the other side opposite. We're going to go rubber washer and then metal washer. And then we're going to put the nut on it. We're going to get our adjustable wrenches that we talked about earlier and actually need a bigger one for this other side. And that's tight and if that gives us any problems then I'll put some 5 minute epoxy in there and then well, I'll take the bolt out, put five minute epoxy in there, put the bolt back in, tighten it back up, and that should be good forever. But I'm hoping this rubber washer will do the trick. We'll find out in a second. The other thing, we took the pipe out of right here, and on this side, on this side right here, this is the part that was supposed to go as a paint sprayer. Um, I could plug that, I could take this out and plug it, but I think this will be beneficial for us to, it'll let air out faster. Um, to just leave this valve in here and that's how I'll take air out this This right here is your pop-off valve and that is adjustable. It's supposed to be set at 60 psi So we'll see about that when we get going This valve right here is supposed to let the air out, but I think it'll do it slow That's why I want to keep that other one on there and then we have this right here, here's our regulator. This black thing coming out right here is our regulator. And it regulates by turning that back and forth. And then here's your uh, hose in, hose in. And then but I think we can do without this one. We have this on and off. This will control the air going in. And I think we can get rid of this and we'll just stick that quick connect coming off of here. So I think that's what we need to do right now. So basically we're done. we're finished with the modifications pretty much right now. Uh, when I add air to it, I'm gonna figure out, we'll figure out real quick if it has leaks from the factory or not, and we can deal with those pretty easy. You just take it apart and we'll, uh, we'll deal with it. Either put tape or that pipe sealant on there. The other thing that comes with this is, here's some wheels, which I may or might, may not use those in the long run, but um, I, don't, I think I'll end up bolting it to a table. So I have some extra casters. Here's a handle for the agitator. We don't need that. And some directions. And it also comes with the extra little fitting for a little air fitting. And on the inside here, it has a, a metal lighter. I'm gonna leave it in there. Now one thing, this is a cheaper model, although I'm not afraid of its quality. Um, it does have some discrepancies. Online it's gonna say that it's good to 60 PSI. On the lid right here it has a sticker that says 50 PSI. In the directions right here, it says max pressure is 90 PSI. No. see if I can show you that. Max pressure, 90 PSI. Now, which one do I believe? I don't know, but my Harbor Freight one, I run it at 50 and it, it makes crystal clear castings. So if I run this one at 50, I'm not, I'm not afraid of the pressure. You might be, use your own safety measures in your own shop, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be fine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this on there and see if it leaks. I just did a quick little check to make sure our valves, all the valves are closed. Uh, this one's closed and nothing to it but to do it. And put your safety glasses on or the trolls will get you. And let's put some air to it.
That's right about 50 PSI right there. So I'll just shut this off and disconnect the air. And I'll come back in about 30 minutes or so and see if it's lost any pressure. I don't hear anything leaking right now and I I'm pretty surprised too because normally everything leaks but um, I'm gonna come back about 30 minutes and we're gonna see what's happening. <laughs> now it's been about 30 minutes and it hasn't lost anything. I'm pretty I'm actually pretty surprised I expected something or to find some kind of leak but I haven't um, and it's it's still <clears throat> just above 50 psi Now, once again the book says 90 the internet says 60 and this says 50 so I put it at 50 should be good it's way better built than the Harbor Freight one that I put 50 in all the time so I'm not scared of it um, the other thing is pop-off valve we're gonna I'll I'll zoom in here and show you how to adjust that or at least explain it or we'll go ahead and do it until it pops off and and you'll probably get a good idea how it works so here's a pop-up valve right here I haven't messed with it so I'll, it'll probably surprise me too so there's a this cylinder shaped thing with the little plunger right there that's what's gonna pop off um, there's a nut there's a jam nut right there we're gonna loosen that and then if you screw it out, there's going to have less tension on the spring in there, and it should hear that. So that's 50, that'll be at 50 pounds. Right there. <laughs> we'll just screw it in just a little bit and jam it up, and it, it should be fine for what we're doing, but that's how you would adjust that thing. This right here is our other valve to let the air out. And you just unscrew it a little bit so it starts coming out. But I didn't think that was fast enough. So this one here. Now there's a couple things to note on this one. This is this is pretty big and the most people aren't gonna need anything this big. I'm just, I'm from Texas, so we gotta do things big, I guess. Um, they have other sizes of these. There's a five gallon one. There's comparable uh, brands that have two and a half gallon, five gallon, eight gallon. And I'll put links to those all below so you can go check those out. Um, this takes a lot longer to fill up. So when you're mixing your resin, make sure it's ready faster because you're gonna, it takes, you know, 30 seconds to do. So you're gonna have to add that into your equation when you're doing things. Uh, you're gonna need if you have a small compressor to fill this thing up. You obviously you're gonna need a bigger compressor um, Or a bigger tank on a compressor to get this thing filled up I, I have a 60 gallon tank on my compressor and it's it's plenty But if you're running on the bare minimum if you have a Harbor Freight pot or a smaller pot It's gonna be a whole different ball game with these ones because it just takes that much more to fill this thing I was kind of surprised at how long it took to fill but you got a trade-off. I can do way bigger things in here so if you're looking at one of the smaller ones from this brand or another brand, the, what I just showed you is pretty much the same for all of them. You need to plug that hole and you need to get that siphon tube out of there and then kind of clean this up up here. Exactly what we did is going to be exactly what you have to do on those other ones. So if you don't want a bigger one like this and you want a smaller one, the procedure I just did will be the same on those. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. I got big things coming up. We're going we're gonna to use this thing next, and it's going to be a pretty cool project. So if you haven't, go ahead, hit the bell, make sure you get notified, and then uh, we'll see you all next time. Y'all be good.